Hi guys, Bellados 3D here with another part of our Western render tutorial. And in this part, I will be creating uh, various types of a roof for our structures. Uh, we are slowly progressing through the parts needed to create multiple buildings for our western scene so without much more ado let's get to the modeling okay so here we are back in blender and what i've done here is i've created a very small scene with two buildings in it using the components we've already created i've added a little bit of a hdri lighting to it just to see what the final thing could look like um see how the textures work and i think they work very well um, so next we're going to be creating some roofs and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two types of roof. The first is going to be a sloped roof with a tin texture on it and the second is going to be a more complicated peaked roof using tiles. So let's get started on creating our tin roof. So first things first, let's put this into material preview mode to cut down on the resource usage while we're doing this. And what I want to do is I want to go over here and find my 2.5 meter by 4 meter wall. So let's shift D to duplicate, Alt G to bring it back to the center. And let's focus in with the period key on the numpad. Now let's have a look. So we need to RZ minus 90 and GY4 to move it back into position. Let's duplicate that again and RZ 180, GX4 and GY minus and that should bring us into the correct positioning now obviously this doesn't look like a sloped roof yet and what we're going to do is we're going to cut this across about halfway i think through the diagonal of the model but first things first let's join them together and i'm going to isolate these with the backslash on the numpad key and that means i can only see those items in the viewport i'm going to side view and then hit tab, I can see it from the side. Now, if I press the Alt Z button, that puts it into X-ray view, and I'm actually seeing through this, and I can see all of the geometry. It's it's like uh, making it slightly, slightly transparent. Now, I need to get a line from here to here. If I was to do it using, for example, the, the knife tool, and select that, one there and then that one up there it doesn't always do a straight line as you can see it tries to take the, the the best path using existing geometry so that's no good for us i'm going to use the bisect tool and if i can find it there we go we find the bisect tool there and now what i can do is i can select everything and then i can take from here and draw a line up to where I need it. Now I don't need it all the way up to the top, that's too tall. So let's bring it up one, two, three, four, five pieces up to about there. And we do, and that creates a line all the way across. Now, hopefully, that also means it's got all the pieces in between. And it has, yes. Now, if I go down to this option here, we have the options for the bisect tool itself. And what I can do is I can clear the inner or the outer of that edge. So let's clear the inner of that edge. And I think that looks about right. So we've now got our two pieces all ready and we can actually clean it up a little bit. I can delete that face there. Oh, and there's another little bit there. Uh, let's, nope, let's select an X. Just clean these up a little bit like so. And then just check down at the bottom to see if there's anything else. Uh, nope, that looks about right. So we now have the sloping supports of our roof. So let's turn off the X-ray mode because we don't need that anymore. Let's press Alt-Z and that will turn that off. What we need to do now is add the actual roof itself. So I'm going to press 7 on the numpad while we're still in the edit mode. And press Shift-A, plane, to create a plane. Press G to grab, Y to set it to the Y axis and 1 meter back. And then G, X, and 1 to bring it across. Press 2 to go into Edge Select and select that edge. G, X, 2. And again, the back edge, G, Y, 2, like so. I'm just going to move that back just a tiny bit to give it a bit more of an overlap. And then select both of these edges, 
S and X to bring them out. And we want them just overlapping the edge of the roof so that it looks like it's resting on top of the supports. Okay, so select the front edge, G and Z to bring it up on the Z axis. And we'll bring it up just above this piece here. And we have our flat roof there. Now we need to go into face select with three, select that. And we're going to extrude it down just a tiny bit, like so. So it covers the edge. And the reason we do it this is to give it a bit of thickness so you can see the under edge of that as well. So let's press I and insert and bring it inside these supports. And we're going to delete that face with X and F because it's extra geometry we don't need and we don't need to have extra texture space. So I need to unwrap this as well. So let's go into edge mode, alt and left click on that piece. Shift alt this piece, this piece and this piece. And that selects all of the edges around that corner. Control E, mark seam. And now it should unwrap perfectly. So select everything, U and unwrap. And there we go, a perfect unwrap. But now we need to add the actual texture itself. So let's go to our materials tab. We press the plus button to create a new texture. Select new to make sure it is a new texture. Double click and change the name to roof underscore tin. And then finally, with all the faces, we need that texture selected. Press assigned to add the new texture. And now we can go in and add our texture in the shading tab. Okay, so that's done. The text is now properly assigned. Let's take a look at it on the model. Okay, so we have it on the model and it looks like it's around the wrong way. So let's go back to UV editing and look at that. Yes, it's around the wrong way. Select all of it, R90 to rotate. And there we have it on our model. I'm just going to scale that up a little bit. Give it a little bit more geometry on there. Bring that down a little bit like so. And I think that looks about right so we have our first sloped roof piece and let's change the name roof underscore tin underscore four meter times four meter and that's our first tin roof piece we just need to make a couple of minor tweaks to this firstly the origin point you can see the origin point is actually at the back we need it at the front so let's press shift c just to make sure that we are in the center of the scene there and let's press right click set origin origin to 3d cursor and that puts it in the right position the other tweak is to increase the length of this piece because if you think about it when you build the houses up you're going to be putting pillars on the corners and that pillar is going to be overlapping by a little bit. So I'm just going to literally S and Y just to scale it up a little bit. Just, just a touch like so. And press Control A and scale. Now let's see how that looks on the house uh, by coming out of isolation mode. And I'm going to move this piece onto the house. That looks about right. Yep, that looks about fine. In fact, I'm going to actually S, Y, just bring that in just a little bit so that it's not so much out. There we go. And yep, that looks about right to me. So let's control A and apply the scale. Let's move that back to the center. And I'm going to move this piece uh, G, X along here. Shift D to duplicate. Alt G to bring it back into the center. Now we need to make the six meter by six meter piece. And the first things we will do is go into edit mode, go into top down view. I'm going to turn on uh, X ray mode again with Alt Z. I'm going to select all of this side here and G X two. And then I'm going to go back into object mode and S Y 1.5. And that should make that the right size. Let's sort the textures out. So let's go back in. Oh, must remember, apply the scale. Go back in. I'm going to select this top piece, if I can. And over the UV editing window, S 1.5. And I'm just going to adjust that slightly so that it's in the right place. And I think that's about right. Let's turn off X-ray mode. And that's your 
textures about the right scale. We need to also do the same with these textures here. SX 1.5, and that's our textures. Let's see how that fits onto our model. Excellent, that looks really good. Let's put it into rendered mode. And that looks really good like that. Okay, so that's our two pieces created for our tin roof. I'm just gonna move this out of the way and go back to material preview. And we're gonna create our peaked roofs. So first things first, let's get to the center of the, the uh, scene. And then I'm gonna grab my four meter by 2.5 meter wall and duplicate it with shift D and then right click to snap it into position. Alt G to bring it back to the cursor. Now what I'm going to do with the peaked roofs, they're going to be a little bit more complicated. They're going to be more modular. And I'm going to create an end piece and then a middle piece so that you can put as many as you want in a row. And you can either use the build wall piece that we got here or you can use an end piece. So first things first, let's create a bit of a frame. We need a triangular frame on here. So I'm going to check my posts and press N to go into the properties panel. They're 0.25 by 0.25. So let's create a plane. And that's two by two. We want to make that 0.25 by 0.25. And the reason we want this is because we need these to fit on the top of these posts perfectly. Right, so let's go into edit mode. Three to go into face mode. Press A to select everything and shift and D. I'm going to press R, Y, 90 to rotate it. And then I want that in the center of this piece here because I'm going to mirror this. So G, X, 2. Now I want it exactly at the top of this, exactly 1.5 meters up above this. So we actually need this, the top of this, to be on the bottom line here. So if I was to make sure that that face is selected and then hover over this piece and press G, Z and control. You'll see that it snaps to that face because I have the snake, the face snapping on, on there. Now I can go G, Z, two and bring it up. Now I can add a mirror modifier. Let's go into object mode and add a mirror modifier. So modifiers tab, add modifier and mirror. Now it doesn't look like it's done anything because it's actually mirroring from this piece here. So it's actually giving us this side. We need it to mirror from this piece here. So let's go back into edit mode again and make sure that face is selected. Press shift and S cursor to select it. I'm back out, right click and set origin to 3D cursor. And now you can see that it's mirrored perfectly on that side. And what we'll do is once we complete this, we'll apply the mirror and we'll uh, put the origin back in the middle there. Now, obviously we need these two pieces connected. So let's press A to select everything. So we've got both pieces selected. Right click on the mouse and a bridge faces, and that bridges perfectly up to there. And that's what we need for that. So let's go back out into object mode and press Control A over the modifier. So we now have a solid piece. Press, press Shift and C to bring the cursor back to the center there. And then we can right click and set origin to 3D cursor. So that's a perfect little peek there for what we need. So we now need to work on this piece here. Let's go into edit mode and press a shift to Z to go into wireframe. Let's go to our vertex select and select all of these top pieces above that peak like so. And then we can press X and F, delete them off. We now have the right height, but we now need our peak. So we could actually put an edge loop in there with Control R. What we're gonna use is a tool called the bisect tool. Now, if you go over to your tools menu here, to the knife and hold the left mouse button down, you get two options, which is the bisect. Now, to use this tool, everything has to be selected or everything you want to cut has to be selected. So let's go to the select and select this half. Go back to the bisect tool, hover over that um, vertex and click and hold and you'll get a line and you bring the line up as far as it will go up to that vertex there and you'll get it as close as possible to that now that creates our geometry our line across and what we can also do is we can either clear the outer or clear the inner and it deletes the the uh, geometry on either the inner or the outer edge 
Now, I think this is outer. Yes, clear outer. Let's clear that outer edge. Now, you notice it's deleted that one as well, which we don't want it to do. So let's not do that. Let's do it another way. Let's go back to select. And in front of the graphics, in select, let's select all of these vertices along here. X and V to delete them. So that's them. And then we can do the other side and make sure all of this side is selected. Go to bisect, hover over this piece. And the reason it deletes that piece, deleted that piece as well is because we've actually got that perfectly on that thing by the looks of it. We actually, we actually got that perfectly on that vertex, lined up perfectly. Um, so let's select on this and let's see if we can do the same. And line it up perfectly on that vertex. Yes, just like that. And let's see if this will clear the outer or the inner. There we go. See, it's deleting all these pieces as well. So let's not do that. Go back to select and select these edges here like so. X and a V. So if we come out of uh, wireframe with shift and Z, we now have our peaked piece on our roof. And let's go back into object mode. And with the backslash on the numpad, bring everything back. So we have our end piece, and that's pretty much done. We just need to add texture to that. But before we do that, I just want to go into that model and press Control A, make sure the scale is right. And I'm going to add a tiny little bit of extra detail into this. And what I'm going to do is in edit mode, I'm going to go to to go to edge select, select that edge loop, and press Control B and bevel, and oh. Ooh, what's happening here? It doesn't seem to be doing anything. We forgot something earlier on. Let's take a look. Let's press 3 to go into face mode and select these two faces and press H. And look, there's a face right there in the middle. When we mirrored it, we forgot to delete that face. So we've got a face intersecting that piece. It's stopping the bevel from working. So let's delete that face. Alt-H to bring everything back. 2 to select, edge select, and Alt-Left-Click around the edge control B and just bring it out a bit scroll up once bring it right down we only need a tiny little edge there and what we want what we're doing here is we're going to create a bit of a bevel on, on this piece here to make it look like two beams butted together rather than a continuous piece of wood so we have that done control minus to Minus the selection, so we've only selected that central piece, and S to scale it down. Now, if we come into object mode, you can see that's clearly two pieces butted together. So let's have a look, and now we have that selected. Press Control E, mark seam, and we can mark that seam around the edge there. We also want to come around here, and we want to press Alt and left click on this seam, and then. Click, 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 our little U-shape on the end. Click, 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 a little U-shape on the end. Now, so that it folds out nice and neat and square, let's also take these two pieces here, shift and click them. Around the front there, shift and click them. And then at the bottom, same again, shift and click those. Control E, and mark seam. Now, if we select everything, press U, and unwrap you and unwrap it comes out nicely on this piece here and this actually should be two pieces yes it is two pieces so we can then just move them on top of each other like so select all r90 let's move it into position on our texture bring it down there we go and obviously that's not showing on the model because we haven't added the texture yet so let's go to our Model, uh, material tab, press the plus button, and then with this little drop down arrow, uh, arrow here, select wood. And there's our wood on our beam. And as you can see, it looks like it's two pieces of wood butted together, which is what we are looking for. Okay, so I'm going to leave these two now separated. I'm going to join them later on. I'm going to, but I'm going to um, leave them two separated, but I'm going to select both of them, Shift D. And I'm just going to move them out of the way for now. Uh, the reason for that is I'm going to use them to create the six meter piece later on. So let's get back to these pieces. We can now join these together like so. so. We have one piece, our end piece. 
I'm not finished with the end piece because we need to put a section of roof on there. And what we're going to do is press Shift A, Mesh Plane. And let's go into a top down view. And while we're in top down view, we'll go into edit mode with tab. We're going to make sure everything's selected and press G, Y, 1 to move it back. G, X, 1 to move it across. I'm going to select this edge here because what I want to do is I want to snap this edge with this edge here. So let's go up to our snapping tool and change it to edge. G, X and control will bring it across. I also want to extend this out a little bit. So let's press E and X to bring it out. And let's bring it out to about there. That should be enough. Yep, that's enough. Let's select this edge here. G, Z, 2 to go up to the top there. And with this edge, we want it just brought down a bit. So G, Z. So there's a slight curve on it, but not too much. There we go. And I think that's about right. Let's select this front edge. Both pieces there. And I'm going to bring it out so that it's over the edge of this beam. But I don't want to move it out because I'm going to reuse this geometry later. I'm going to duplicate these pieces here to create the middle piece for our roof. So let's extrude on the Y and we bring that out so it's just sticking out just a little bit like so. And as you can see, it's just sticking out maybe a little bit more, bring it out a bit more. And I think that looks about right now we need to add a mirror modifier on there and we need it to mirror across this edge so we select this edge shift s cursor is selected go back out into object mode right click and set origin to 3d cursor then go to our modifier tabs add modifier mirror make sure we've got clipping turned on and that's our roof across there next step we need to give it some thickness, but before I do that, I want to give it a texture. So let's go to our material tab. Let's press plus. And I've already added a roof tiles before starting recording. So there we go. There's our roof tiles. Now we need to unwrap it all with you and unwrap. And I think those tiles, they're the right direction, but I think they're a little bit too big. So let's press A to select all of our UVs. And to make the texture smaller on the geometry, we scale up. And if we want it bigger, we scale down. So let's S 1.3, and that makes them tiles a little bit smaller. I think that's a little bit more of a realistic size on there. And now we can thicken up the model by pressing E to extrude. If we press Z twice to get it onto the global Z value and hold down shift, we can just bring it up just a touch. Not a huge amount. It doesn't need a lot of geometry, just enough to thicken it up. And then now we've done that, let's press A to select everything. Shift N to recalculate the normals to get the normals the right way around. And let's delete some of these faces that we don't need. So in face mode, let's select this back face and these two edge faces here and here. X and F, delete them because they're never going to be seen. So we don't need geometry there. And finally, one last piece, what I want to do is I want to select this edge here. I'm going to press E and X to extrude that out there. And I'm going to go up to my snapping tool, select vertex, and I'm going to press G, X and snap to that vertex on the corner of the pillar there. And this is going to be wood. So I'm going to go into face mode, select it, U, U to unwrap to our material tab, press plus and then choose wood and position that into the right place like so. So we now have a wooden piece. Now we haven't assigned it, so let's go back in with it selected, press assign, and there we have our wood bar across there. And it should be repeated on that side, absolutely perfect. And that is pretty much done. Now all we need to do is go in and apply that modifier and then press shift and select the peak piece the end piece press ctrl j to join them together so we have our end piece now to create the middle piece for the four meter we simply go back into that model in face mode we alt select this edge and as you can see it goes all the way around we shift d to duplicate and then we press p to bring it out of the selection and there we have our middle piece and that will perfectly scale uh, perfectly uh, tile with that piece there. So let's see it working.
and as you can see that is perfectly tiling on there now what i would do because it's in two pieces as well i would select both pieces go into edit mode shift z to go into wireframe press one to go into vertex and select that center vertex there and then press g z and just bring it down just a touch now if we come out of uh, wireframe mode and back into rendered mode you can see that little curve it just makes a little bit of difference makes it look a little bit more realistic there and um, it gives it a nice little curve to it and there we have our pieces let's join them together to our house and let's go back into material preview mode go back to our pieces and rename them so we've got the first piece is going to be called roof underscore tiled underscore end then underscore four meter and then we're going to go that one and we're going to call that roof underscore tiled underscore middle underscore four meter and we have our two pieces there let's move that over there now let's create our six meter pieces now we saved a piece for this um earlier on but we didn't actually need to save that i'm going to delete that i'm going to get rid of that like so because uh, i changed my mind of exactly what i'm going to do let's select our four meter end piece shift e to duplicate it or g to bring it back now what we want to do is we want to make this six meters wide but we don't want to change the size of the ends of these beams and we don't want to have to go through every single piece of every single vertex on this moving it slightly so what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode make sure nothing's selected press l over the red piece and select that we're going to press p and bring it out of the selection and now we can manipulate these two pieces separately so select the red piece again sx 1.5 press ctrl a and scale to make sure the scale is correct back into edit mode select everything and then the same on the texture sx 1.5 just to get the scale of the texture right so that's perfect that's fine let's go front orthographic on one on the numpad select this piece backslash to isolate it let's get into edit mode shift z to go into wireframe i'm going to select these two end pieces gx1 move it along one meter and then select all of the right hand side gx1 to move it another meter come out of wireframe, back into object mode and out of isolation mode and now that should actually be perfect sizes so let's join them back together Control j and we have our six meter piece now we need to create our uh, middle piece so same as before we select just those back pieces shift d p to break it out of the selection object mode select it and gy to bring it back and we have our six meter pieces as quick and easy as that so let's uh name these and we already got them roof tiled end and we're going to call these six meter and this one a roof tiled end we don't want that as end we want that as middle underscore six meter and select both of them move them out of the way i'm going to duplicate them and alt g to bring them to the front And there we have it perfectly matching up there. All the textures are perfectly repeating. And again, we can go back into it in wireframe and we can select these vertices here, G, Z, bring them down slightly. And it doesn't seem to have selected because I haven't selected all three pieces, idiot. <laughs> Tab, select all of those, G, Z, bring it down just a touch. And there we have it. We have the roofs of our houses. Well, there you go. We have the roofs on our houses. Let's join them together now. Control J. And there we go. And look at those roofs perfectly fitting on there. Nice peaked roofs. Completely modular. You can just add more and more. You can make it longer and longer. Bigger and bigger. And because you've got the end piece here, you could put the end piece at the front and get rid of this piece here. And you could actually rotate it uh, horizontally so you could have horizontal roofs. It's uh, very, very modular. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something from it. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it. 
We now have the main structure of our houses built. We have the walls, we have the beams, we have the roofs, and we have porches and walkways. Next, we need to add detail to the houses with doors and windows, and that will be in the next part of our series. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.